Hi there guys, so it's time for another Friday Unraid tutorial and this tutorial is about installing OpenVPN as a docker on our Unraid server to allow us to safely and securely connect to our server from the outside world. Cracky. So guys, we all love our Unraid server. But what happens when we're away from home at the mother-in-law's and we're bored and we've got nothing to do? Well, what we need is we need a secure and easy way to be able to connect to our server back at home. So what we're going to have to do for that is to install a docker that runs OpenVPN server. Now I've had quite a few people request this video over the last few weeks. But I'd just like to give an extra special thanks to Redland Mover and a Busy Bee for their kind donation to the channel and requesting me to make this video. So as always to install any plugin or docker you need to go across to the apps tab and use Squid's excellent community applications to install this. If you don't have this then please see my video on installing the best plugins for Unraid. So once here just type in OpenVPN and hit enter and then scroll down and the one we're looking for is by the Linux server team and I'd like to give them a big thanks for creating this docker for us and then just go and click on add. Okay and so that brings up the template to fill in and everything's filled in as we need it there's nothing to actually change here at all. Um, there's just a couple of things to look for is just check that privilege is on and the network type is on host and then just click apply. This will then pull down the docker and install it onto the server. Okay, scrolling down we can see the OpenVPN AS docker here. Um, by the way, the AS part stands for Access Server. So we need to left click on the icon and then go to Web UI. Now don't worry about this warning saying the connection's not private, that's absolutely normal. Just click on to advanced if you're on Chrome and then just proceed to the site anyway. And now you'll see it's asking for a username and password, but you're not going to know what that is. It's got nothing to do with your Unraid username and password. The username is actually admin, but we haven't actually got a password as yet. Well, we may have a password, but we don't know what it is. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to make an SSH or Telnet connection to the server and create one from there. Right, so once connected to the server, we need to run this following command. Docker space exec space hyphen it space and then the name of the docker openvpn hyphen as then space then passwd space admin and what this command is doing is it's allowing us to create a password for the user admin within the docker container itself so put the password in here and then just confirm it here so it says the password's updated successfully. So let's just move this window out of the way now. And now back on the login box, we want to change it from connect to login. And so here in this part, we put in the username of admin. And here we put the password we just created. And that brings us to this page here, where there's various clients you can actually download for the different operating systems. But we need to ignore this because we haven't configured our server. So what we need to do is go ahead and configure the server by clicking on admin. Then we put in the same username admin and the same password here again. And that logs us into the VPN server. And there's a user agreement here that we should read or not. So look through that if you want and then click agree. And that brings us to the status overview page. And the first thing we want to look at is the server network setting. And as you can see here, the host name or IP address. Well, the IP address is actually set for a local IP address, which is the IP address of my Unraid server. And so this local IP address, obviously for our needs, is no good. Because we're going to want to be connecting to our server through the VPN from outside of our own network when we're out and about. So what we need to know is our public facing IP address. And most of us will probably have dynamic IP addresses if we've got a home internet connection. So the best thing to do is to set up a dynamic DNS tracker. Now the one I use is DynDNS.com. 
You don't have to use this one, any one was absolutely fine. I've heard there are some free ones, I've not used them myself, one of which is called Duck DNS, so you can check that one out if you like. I've not used it myself, but I've heard it's meant to be pretty good. So anyway, you need to set yourself up a Dynamic DNS account to track your IP. And as I've got an account there already, I'm going to set up mine in DynDNS.com. And I'm going to name mine MyUnraid.DynDNS.org. And just on a side note, this IP address you see here obviously is not my true IP address. For the sake of this video and my security, I connected through a VPN so my true IP address isn't shown in the video. And after having set up your tracker, don't forget that you're going to need to constantly update your IP when it changes. So you can put it into your router if your router supports that function, or you can download an app on your computer that will update your IP when it changes. So with the tracker set up, just pop it in here as the host name. Mine's myunraid.dyndns.org. Let's take a look at the interface and IP address section here. You can see here it's set as ETH0, that's fine, that's my local IP address. For most of us that's what we're normally going to have is the ETH0, at the bottom it's the same. The only time for you it might be different is if you're using bonded network cards on your Unraid server, then you may have to change this to something different. But other than that, there's nothing you need to change here, so just go down to the bottom and click Save Settings. And then underneath here where it says settings changed, just click update running server. Right, so as we only have a default admin user, the next thing we're going to do is to create a new user. You can see here it says add username, but this doesn't actually create a new user. The user needs to be first created on the or within the Docker container itself. So for that we need to SSH into the container and create the user there. Okay, to add the user, just enter this command docker space exec space hyphen it space open vpn hyphen as and then space add user and then space and the name of the user i'm going to put ed here press enter and then it's going to ask for the password that you want to have for this user so put in a password and then pop the password in again to confirm then here just enter the default settings by pressing enter on each thing and then at the end click Y for yes. And now that user is successfully created. And so now back in the user permissions, I can add the same user in here. And I'm also going to make this one an administrator. And I'm also going to click allow auto login as well. And what this does is allow the user using the client software to automatically log in without having to provide a username and password. But for an added layer of security, untick this so they have to put their username and password in as well. So click on save settings again and then update running server. So now we've added our new user, let's next look at this section here, web server. Now this section is where we put in the details about the SSL certificate that runs in OpenVPN. And I think the first time that people use OpenVPN server, this bit can be a bit confusing. You can see here that it actually says that the host name doesn't match the certificate here. But we don't actually need the certificate to actually work in order to use the VPN anyway. So what I'm going to do now is to show you the VPN working without this certificate at all. And then after we've got it working, we'll come back to this part here and we'll add a valid certificate. Now we'll log out from the admin account. So just click here, log out. Then from the web address, just take off the admin forward slash and that will bring us back to this other login page. And then from here, we just log in with the user that we created earlier. For me, it's Ed. And now we're back at the list of clients that we saw earlier, but now because we've configured the OpenVPN, these clients will be configured for the user that we just logged in as, which for me is Ed. So I'm going to download this Windows client here, and then I'm going to go to another computer, which is outside of my network, and try and connect to the server. Okay, and before any OpenVPN client can connect to your OpenVPN server, you need to open just one port on your router. 
and the port number you need to open is 1194 with the protocol being UDP and then you need to point this port to the local IP address of your Unraid server. And so now this port is forwarded, we're now ready to see if we can make a VPN connection to our server. Now it can be a bit awkward trying to test these things out. So what I suggest you do is to use some software like either Splashtop Desktop or TeamViewer and connect to someone else's computer and then try and make a VPN connection back to your server. So I've connected to this Windows 7 computer here and I've just transferred over the install file for the OpenVPN Connect software. So let's install this on this computer. Okay, so the software is now installed. So this is the icon for it down here. It says the VPN is disconnected. So let's try and make a connection. So we connect to myunraid.dyndns.org. As you can see here, we've got an open VPN warning. And this is saying basically that we've got an uncertified profile. Well, this is actually normal because we don't have a valid SSL certificate. So what we can do, we can just ignore this and click yes and not worry about it again. Okay, and now you can see that it's connected to my Unraid server. So let's just try and actually put in my local IP address here. Okay, so you can see here it looks like it's not actually connecting to my server. Now this probably isn't a problem. What I imagine it is, is if we have a look here, it's because it's saying this is an unidentified network. So let's just disconnect and we'll just try and connect back again. And this time we'll choose work network. Okay, so now when we try and connect, it should say that it's okay. So let's put the local address in again. And this time it brings up the web GUI of my Unraid server. And if we go and have a look on the, say, Docker tab, let's try and have a look at MB. And everything seems to be working pretty well. Okay, so now let's see if we can actually connect to a network share. So this is a share I have on my local server, one called Software. Yeah, so I can browse through my network share fine. So that seems like the VPN's working absolutely as it should be. Okay, so you could just leave it there and your VPN will work fine. But if you want to configure the SSL certificate, we'll go through how to do that now. But to do this part, you are going to need your own domain name. The domain I'm going to use is gridrunner.co.uk. So what we're gonna do is we're going to add a C name to the DNS records for this domain. Now let's call it openvpn.gridrunner.co.uk and we're going to point this C name to the dynamic DNS service we have. So we're going to point it to myunraid.dyndns.org. So basically what this is going to do is it's going to point openvpn.gridrunner.co.uk to my dynamic IP address on my router. And once we set that, we can check the DNS propagation to check that this is going to work. So for that, we need to go to www.whatismydns.net. So let's paste in what we just created and see how it looks. So the DNS propagation looks good. So now it's time to go across to our SSL creation website, which we can find at www.sslforfree.com. And here we want to paste in our name again and then click on create free SSL certificate. In order to get our certificate we have to verify that we own the domain and there's three ways to do it. We can do it by automatic FTP verification or manual verification or by manual verification via DNS. Now I find the manual verification by DNS is far, by far the easiest way. So let's click this method and then click manually verify domain and if we scroll down here what it wants us to do is it wants us to put a txt record in our dns records on our domain so let's copy and paste this part out here then we need to go back to our domain to edit the dns and add a txt record and paste that into here make the ttl1 then we need to go back and copy this data part to put into the record then go back and paste it into the TXT data and click add record. 
So once we've added our record, we can go back here and we're going to click on a link to check that this data here has been put correctly into the record. And as you can see at the top here, there's the same data that we saw on the previous page, so our TXT record's correct. So now we can go ahead and download our SSL certificate by clicking here. And then once generated, scroll down here and then click download all SSL certificate files. And to make it easier, I'm going to move mine onto the desktop. So next we just need to log back into our OpenVPN server. So next, let's just unzip this certificates file here. And then next we need to go back to our server network settings. And we're going to have to change the host name of our server to what we created earlier, which for me is openvpn.gridrunner.co.uk. Now click on save settings and then update running server. So now go across and click on to web server. And if we scroll down, now we need to add the various parts of our SSL certificate. So first click on CA bundle and then browse to the folder you unzipped and click on the CA bundle at the top. Then next choose the certificate and then finally choose the private key file. So now we just click on to validate and now the validation results you should see a successful match for the host name and you should be good to go. So now you can click the save button. So now we've got a valid certificate let's change the IP address at the top and swap it for our host name. And now you can see there's no error here with the SSL. So because of those changes we've just made to the server we're going to find we're going to need to re-download the OpenVPN client. So now we'll just switch across to our remote Windows 7 machine and we'll reinstall this new client. And then we can make a new connection to our VPN server. You can see here it's got a new name. Now it's called openvpn.gridrunner.co.uk. So let's click connect on that. And now because we have a proper SSL certificate installed, we have no mention here of any unverified profiles. So guys, that's how you install and configure OpenVPN server on Unraid. So the next time you drag around to the in-laws, just bring your tablet or your laptop with you and you can still mess around with the server from there. So there we are, that's the end of another video. I hope you guys found that useful and if you did, well please like and subscribe to the channel and whatever you're up to for the rest of the day guys, I hope it's good and as always I'll catch you in the next video.